Start game now. The fun is back. Oh yes siree, it's the 2600 from Atari. I can't think of a better way of celebrating episode 26 than by reviewing the video game system Atari 2600. Actually, this is the first time we're reviewing a game system in of itself. And what better way to start with a system that most retro game fans may have started on themselves, especially if they were a child of the late 70s or early 80s. The Atari 2600 debuted in 1977, straight from Sunnyvale, California. And for many of us, it holds a lot of good bond memories. Now, when the system first came out, it cost $199, which may not sound like a lot today, but $199 back in 1977, this is the year 2014, that would be like spending $800 today, almost $800, which is a lot. So if your parents bought you an Atari uh, 2600 when it came out. Please call them up tonight and tell them how much you love them and appreciate them. Now, the 2600 was not always called the 2600. A lot of younger fans may not realize that, but there was a period of time, especially before the 5200 came out, which was its uh, successor, when it uh, came out, it was called the Atari VCS. Now, the VCS might stand for very cool stuff. It doesn't. It could also stand for Vectrex causes stink breath, but it doesn't. It actually stands for video computer system. That's right. The Atari 2600 was actually for a long time called the Atari video computer system. But back in the day, people, when they would mention Atari, they knew that you're talking about this. Not too many people would call it the video computer system. They just call it Atari. And uh, it, there's a good reason for that. It was very influential. This system may have had one of the greatest impacts of all video game systems, especially when it comes to the home video game market. It was probably the first big success as far as that going, really establishing, setting the foundation for a video game uh, home system market, if you will. Anyways, so it would cost $199, which is closer to $800 today, but it didn't just come with the system. No, it came with a few extra goodies. First of all, it came with two of your standard Atari 2600 joysticks, single button right there, very classic form. So there you go, you'd get two of these guys. You would also get a set of paddle controls. Now the set of paddle controls was kind of interesting because you'd get two, but they would plug into one cartridge port. You, they'd share one cartridge port there. And actually what, what I find interesting about this uh, set of PAL controls is this is the Sears version, which I didn't realize until I dug them out today just for this review. So it came with two paddles uh, also, and it also came with a game, it came with combat which it has a very special place in many atari gamers hearts and combat was uh, a two-player only game but it had different variations 27 different variations if you will when it says 27 video games it doesn't mean there's 27 cartridges in the box it means there's a, that there's 27 variations and if you look at the cartridge you can see that it has five variations of the tank, nine, uh, another was at four of the tank pong, and then you have several invisible tank, and then a couple biplane, and then a couple uh, jet fire there, and that makes up all 27 different variations. They would do different things in that. So there you go. And yeah, when the games first came out, they had these text labels. They didn't have the picture. And you'd take in your system here, take your cartridge, I'm sorry, plug it in the top just like this so that you can read the title from it. You couldn't see the box art because it would be facing like this. So all you'd see is that beautiful wood grain finish. And you would turn the power on. Yep, it has a power switch. And then you have different switches here. Now, originally the system had six switches on top. They would eventually scale it down to four. They would start with this color and black and white switch. Now, what this switch would do is it would kind of prioritize for your system for the TV you had. You see, back in the day, youngins, not all TVs had color. Some had black and white, but actually what black and white meant was it was monochrome. It wasn't just black and white, but several shades of gray. So if you had one of those TVs, you could flick it down here, and this would prioritize the system's color so it would look better on your black and white television set. So yeah, but if you had a color TV and you switched it to the black and white, you could kind of see black and white images, different various shades of gray as well. So doing that would actually, it depended on the programmer. They may not have done anything with it. And some programmers later on would use the switch for other, re, uh, other resources instead of using it for black and white. 
But yeah, you could actually do this, and it wasn't uncommon for many kids to have a black and white television to play their Atari on. You also had these difficulty switches, which would adjust, as it as it sounds, the difficulty as a game. And it would be used for various uh, things like this. For instance, if you're playing Asteroids, one difficulty would have the UFO fly through, one would not. You know, so you, just, you could adjust it just like that. Also, let's say you're playing a sport game, and one player is extremely more skilled than the other well you could use the difficulty to kind of handicap a more skilled one to make the playing field more in, uh more interesting you could have the left difficulty on b the right on a and that would kind of level the playing field or it could make the playing field very unlevel depending on who was on what side and it depended on the programmers i believe usually b was the easier difficulty but not always of course it depended on that then you had to, your game select screen so if i'm playing combat and i want to get to the biplanes and that's like in the 20s i think it was i'd have to hit this select switch 20 times and get to the one I wanted and then when I was ready to play my game I hit the game reset it resets the game but it also starts the game so you just do that and it springs right back up so these switches have a kind of springiness to them they feel nice and firm later on the right and left difficulty would be switched to little uh, switches that I believe were just in the back that you would just flick to one side or the other so they, that's what they removed there also if it kind of interesting it's kind of hard to see but you can kind of see two holes in here and i believe originally the intention for the system was to put speakers within the system so you would have stereo sound a lot of uh, cartridges have stereo programmed into them even though it only comes out mono in most setups so let's go ahead and look at the back of the system so back here is where you plug in your controllers a very interesting dynamic we think of most controllers being plugged in the front this one was plugged in the back so you have your right controller your left controller and you'd have to kind of you know play with the cable so they didn't interfere with your tv kind of interesting placement i'd rather they be in the front also where you put in the power adapter now the power adapter is quite interesting let me reach over and grab my power adapter let's see here we have an authentic atari power adapter the the blocky part if you will is not too big and also the plug is usually on most adapters more towards this side not on where the cord comes in but this is on the cord side but this is a very long cable you could literally plug this in the basement all the way to your Atari upstairs in the living room this is an extremely long cable and also the end of it is very interesting it looks kind of like a headphone jack which is very unusual for power cables so if you ever see an atari for sale but it's missing the power cable don't jump on it right away because these jacks are not the easiest to find it's not like you can find a lot of atari a lot of uh, ac adapters like with the sega genesis i can you know find different uh, adapters that'll work with my sega genesis but not the atari very specialized plug you know very unique long cord i mean lots of cord here so be sure you get a uh, an ac adapter if you're buying uh buying an atari 2600 or vcs also the it has the cord that plugs to your tv built into the system that's right is this end is built in that is not normal with a lot of systems but this one is built in and this again is also a long cord i think this is like somewhere around 10 feet long or something like that it just keeps going and going and going and going now when you get to the end of your cord, which you have right here, it looks like kind of like what, what we would see in a standard RCA cable today. Now, what you would do with this is in the olden days, you would plug this into a TV switch box, which the system would also come with. And it would look something like this. And you can see one side, it says computer, one side, it says TV. And then you would use these little, you'd unscrew these because the TVs would have these kind of hooks which you can see right here and you you'd do it as a pass through and usually this would be done to channel three i believe so you would just plug this in and when you wanted to switch over from one to the other you would have to switch reach behind your tv and switch it this one has a little adapter in the back so you can plug it into a coax cable just like most tvs have today so this is one way of getting around in a modern setup another way also is just by finding an adapter they make these silver adapters that you can plug in i think they're called f adapters I actually have one here and they're really handy they're not too big very small you just plug it in like this you got it plugged into your cable screw this into a coax cable somewhere either on like a vcr or your television set 
and there you're good to go. You may need to get a splitter if you're running cable or something like that, but this is very handy. I've had massive amount of su success, at least at my house, with, with these things. So there you go, the Atari 2600, the basic setup. Yeah, originally they were produced in Sunnyvale, California, and the original models are called the Heavy Sixer because the materials they made were a lot heavier. This one, however, uh, was manufactured in Taiwan. Later on, they would ma manufacture them across the seas to save money. So this is not a heavy sixer. It is lighter in that uh, regard. The older the system, the more desirable it is. Now, Sears also got into the game. They partnered with Atari and they made their own version called the Sears Telegames Video Arcade System. And let's see, I happen to have uh, one here. And you can see, very, very similar. You know, it's it has it goes for more of the silver on top. Has this kind of ugly green on top. Has a has a also a, a wood grain with the video arcade going on there. I actually like the Atari. This this is like a marbled wood grain where the Atari looks more. You know, has the lines in it. And this one though uh, was manufactured for Atari. It says also in Taiwan, same place. So same kind of system here. This one uh, unfortunately does not work but it you know it's still cool to have but here you have the original as well later on they would uh, as i said take away two of the switches later on they'd also take away the the wood grain and they called that the vader system it was all black and then at, later in the late 80s they would actually re, uh, release the atari 2600 junior which looked more like a 7800 console it was, it was very streamlined it was much smaller much thinner, much lighter weight, and that would be the last officially produced Atari system by Atari in the States. The Atari 2600 would go well into the late 80s. You could actually get them off the shelf. Even in 1990, it would have been possible in some stores to buy an Atari 2600 brand new off the shelf. At that point, they dropped the price to 50 bucks. Isn't that nice? So there you go. It was a very long-lasting system. Some people argue that it was a long-lasting, uh, long, long-lasting system of all time. I'm not sure the PlayStation 2 may have eclipsed it, but definitely a very influential system, as you can see. Now, the Atari 2600 had a huge library of games, over 500 games made. Not all of them were good, and by today's standard, some of them would be very crude. A lot of the games were high score only kind of games. There was no ending, there was no way to defeat the game, you just kept playing for the highest score possible. And the graphics were very crude, as you would expect. Very, very blocky, very limited colors, and often had a flicker because they had to do this technique called bank switching sometimes to get the most out of it, where it was all, almost like they were uh, flickering between two different games at the same time to get the most out of it. That's why the flicker's going on is because they are trying to go through between two different programs at the same time, trying to get the most out of the system. But it did have a lot of influential games, games like Space Invaders, Missile Com uh, Command, Superman Adventure, even E.T. to an extent. Yes, it's very controversial, but it was also uh, popular at the time. You have to remember, it did sell millions of copies, as you might remember from one of my earlier reviews. It was also a fairly fem uh, family friendly system. Part of it was the limitations. You couldn't really draw a lot of detail in the system. However, be advised, some uh, adult companies did make some adult games with very crude graphics, but it was also very crude in the content and I would not recommend those at all. And there was also some other games that they made based on, you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween. That might be a little bit unfamily friendly, but with the graphics and the sound as it is, it's very hard to tell. That's one of the, the beauties, I guess you could say, of the limited palette of the 2600 is that they could take a game like Aliens, which was based on a radar movie, and it becomes more, something more like Pac-Man because of the limited capabilities. But the gameplay was supreme. It wasn't about graphics with the system so much as it was gameplay. So would I recommend a, a 2600 for you to purchase well that is it basically depends where you're at if you just want to play some atari games there are a lot of compilations out there in lots of different ways for instance you could buy an atari flashback 2 unit like i have right here which is basically a miniature atari with i think something like 40 games built in they're now at uh, the flashback 4 which has like 80 or something like that and these things you know you can get them like 20 30 40 bucks at a store and you can just have all the games built in and some of the systems like this one will actually take the original joysticks if you do have them 
So could you buy one of these instead if you're just looking for a, a few games in a modern style? Yeah, it's a lot easier to hook these up. They use the RCA cables. There's no tinkering. It is still in mono. But these are this is a good alternative if you're just looking for a few. Also, there's some great uh, collaborations out there, compilations, uh, especially on the DS. It has a couple of good Atari Greatest Hits. And I know just about every system, it seems like, has some. I know they're releasing Atari games for the iPhones and stuff like that, too. So would I recommend buying this? Well, if you were to go on eBay and you want to get one, the, the, the price of these systems fluctuate a lot. And I'm finding it hard to find these out in the wild. So if you want to get it on eBay, first of all, make sure it has all the hookups you need. Make sure it has that power cable. Make sure it works. Some of these systems are pushing way over 30 years old. So make sure the system works. But if you want to get one, I think about 50 bucks should get one shipped to your door with some games. Give or take. You might find a, a nice little setup for 40. You might have to pay 60. But sometimes, you know, this the setups, especially if it includes a box or if it's a heavy sixer or has a good selection of games, it can go for over $100. So it depends where you're at. If you Hardcore collectors are definitely going to want to play this. What I prefer is to play my 2600 games on the Atari 7800 and kill two birds with one stone. So for me, if I was looking to kind of limit my collection, I would probably just get an Atari 7800 even though it's not the same, doesn't have the cool wood grain, doesn't have the cool grooves, which by the way, a little bit of a pain to clean, you know, so if you find one, you know, at a garage sale or you get one off eBay, but it's not clean, you're going to have, you know, quite a cleaning to do to get into all these grooves with Q-tips and what have you. But, um, yeah, would I buy one? If you're a hardcore collector, yes. If you finally remember the Atari 2600 and you want to play games like uh, Superman or even E.T., these licensed games that you're not going to get on compilations, yes, get an Atari 2600. It is very influential. It is definitely, I think retro gamers should have a way to play uh, 2600 games somehow, whether it's through compilations or Atari 2600. This system, uh, some will argue, might be the greatest of all time. It definitely opened the floodgates, but beware, there's a lot of shovelware for this system as well. A lot of games like Tax Avoiders, which are just bad, but there are a lot of diamonds out there, especially games such as Pitfall and Asteroids and Missile Command. A lot of good times to be had on the system. I also find it interesting, though, that include the paddle controllers, but it didn't include a game for the paddle uh, controllers. They would release several games. I guess it was smart because if you're going to if you want to sell games that use uh, another kind of controller outside of the ones you pack in the system, you're going to have a hard time selling it. So packing in the PAL controllers allowed people to buy games like Circus Atari, Kaboom, Breakout, Super Breakout, and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, would I recommend buying a 2600 system? I would recommend that every retro gamer has a way. So whether you're going to buy a system or whether you're going to buy a flashback or a compilation like the greatest hits, definitely you should try out the Atari 2600. And if you're a younger gamer and you haven't uh, checked out these games, give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance to get into them. I highly recommend a game like Adventure. You know, get it, get into Adventure and see if you can get that down. Yes, it has limited capabilities, but there are there is some good gameplay between these games. Get into a game like Pitfall. Try Pitfall out if you haven't. Or, or a game even like the Asteroids. Or, uh, like I said before, Missile Game Command, Space Invaders, stuff like that. The Atari 2600 recommended that you find a way to play this game some way, somehow. By the way, if you want to find out more about the Atari 2600, I got a couple recommendations. The AtariAge.com website is a great resource, as is the Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast, hosted by my buddy Ferg over on the Retro Junkies Network, which I'm also a part of. Uh, you could just go to the to the RetroJunkies.com to find them, or search for the Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast on Google. You'll find them that way as well, and I'll try and put a link for him in my show notes here on YouTube's Retro Reviews with me, the No Swear Gamer. Uh, also, there's a great book I've heard lots of good things about. Haven't really had a chance to read it yet, but called uh, Atari Business is Fun. So you might want to check that out as well. So there you go, the Atari 2600. Really glad that it is the first system we reviewed here on Retro Reviews. Hey, if you liked videos like this, go ahead, like this one, and subscribe. I hope to do more system reviews in the future as well. You can also find me on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash the no swear gamer. So once again, I am the no swear gamer, your host, and I'm telling you, thank you for making me a little part of your day, and I'll see you next time right here on Retro Reviews.